When we run a Python program from the terminal, we type Python and then the name of the file we want to run. For example, example.py. But you can also pass in a number of what's called command line arguments after that. And these command line arguments can be of two types, a single character preceded by a dash, for instance, dash H, which might stand for help. And if you run it, it usually prints out some documentation about the program along with available commands. Or you can do a longer word preceded by two dashes like dash dash help, which might do the same thing as dash H. And these command line arguments can also take values. For instance, dash I might stand for input, and then you could have some string of text or let's say a file name like some file.txt that the program reads in. There are a number of Python modules available to help you read, parse, and use these command line arguments and values, but my favorite is argparse. Here I'm going to be writing all of the code inside 11 underscore one underscore write file dot py, which is obviously not a Jupyter notebook, but a Python script that will be run from the command line. So argparse provides an argument parser class. Let's import that from argparse, import argument parser. And the argument parser class allows you to create an object that keeps track of all of the arguments your program accepts. So let's make a new argument parser instance called parser argument parser. And let's create a new command line argument called output parser dot add argument dash dash output. And because this argument is a full word, I have two dashes in front of it as is convention. So let's say we want to provide a file name from the command line like this Python 11 underscore one dash dash output. That's our new command line argument, some file dot txt. So how do we get this value, some file dot txt? Let's use the parse args method on our parser instance, parser dot parse args. And let's make a variable called args, set that equal to the output. So this returned value args is an object that has all of our arguments as attributes on it. So we can access the file name like this, print args.output, where output is the name of our command line argument. So now when we run this, we'll see some file.txt printed out. We can make this argument output required using a keyword argument required equals true. And there's another keyword argument that's helpful here, help. We can provide some help text to the user that lets them know what this command is for. So this might be the destination file for the output of this program. So now when we run this and we use the command line argument h, we see this help text printed out. And you see there's the string that we passed in to that, that method. And also notice that if we run this without using output, we get an error. The following arguments are required, output. By convention, we want to give the user options for these arguments. So allowing them to either type output or simply dash O. So all of the different arguments we want to allow, we can put them in here. And while we're at it, let's create another argument called text text or dash t. It's also required. And let's change the help text, the text to write to the file. And you can probably see where we're going with this. Let's write a couple lines to write this text to a new file. So with open args.output, open it in write mode as f, f.write args text plus let's add a new line character to the end of this text just to keep our files clean. And then let's add a print statement at the end so that the user knows that our program has run successfully. Print wrote args.text to file args.output. And let's put some double quotes around this to keep this output message nice. All right. And now we can run this program with something like this, dash o, some file dot txt, 
and the text is some text to write to the file. So note that I have these quotes around this string. And these quotes aren't actually part of the string, but anytime you have a value with spaces in it, you need to put quotes around the string so that the terminal doesn't get confused about what's a single value and what's potentially multiple values. So it looks like it ran successfully. Let's go back to our files and see if we can see anything. All right, and a file just popped up, some file.txt, and it looks like we have some text in it. As you can see, we've made some very powerful arguments.